Hi, this is the first in the series of videos I'm making for voltage calculation. In this series of videos, I will calculate voltage for a few different distributions of charges. And I'll point out one thing that you should watch out for when you are using the uh, technique that I'm demonstrating in some of the videos. So to start with, uh, we covered this in class. As a reminder, we covered the voltage of a point charge in class. So if you have charge plus Q, let's say you want to calculate voltage at a point, at a distance R from point charge. Then we derived this in class. It's given by this formula. Voltage is given by 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R. And we derived this using the definition of voltage. That change in voltage is given by integral of minus E dot DL, some path that you choose, going from some point A to B. So this is the voltage change going from A to B. And for the formula that we derive here, we use a common convention that voltage as R goes to infinity is equal to zero. This is what I call universal reference point in class, and we spent some amount of time covering that. Now we are going to use this formula to drive voltage for a number of different charge distributions. Let me start out with the simplest one. The simplest one is dipole charge distribution. All right, so here's the dipole charge distribution. Charge of plus Q and minus Q separated by some distance D. And it's usually convenient to define coordinate system so that, let's say, the midpoint between the two charges is where my coordinate variable is zero. Let's say I'm defining my axis the normal way. So this would be my x and y axis. Then I would say at this point, I define y equal to zero. So a simple question we could now ask is, what is the voltage at point where y is equal to zero? By which I mean this point. So the points along these dotted lines are all the points where y is equal to zero. So we could parameterize this point. Say, if I have a point here, then the coordinate for this point would be x and y is equal to zero, so zero. So that's the question. What is the voltage at a point x distance away from the dipole? So we do this calculation using superposition principle. As a reminder, this is what superposition principle means. So the superposition principle says the total effect of two or more sources is simple sum of each source. I'm keeping this general because superposition principle is a general principle. It applies to forces. We are implicitly using it in physics 4A. It applies with waves. That's the first time when we actually started mentioning this. And we, it's effective with electric field. And now we are saying that it also works for voltages. So it's a very general principle. And where superposition principle really comes from is what we call linearity. It, it, all these different things that superposition principle applies, these are linear effects. So, um, so for right now, really what matters to us is that superposition principle applies with the voltages. So to calculate the voltage at this point, due to both the positive and negative charge, we only need to write down, well, what is that voltage at this point due to the positive charge? And what would be the voltage at this point due to the negative charge? And simply add that. It's a, it is really all that simple. I feel like I'm spending a lot of time on this simple concept just to justify how simple it is, but it is really that simple.
Um, just to uh, summarize, what we can say is that voltage at point X, so this will be the total voltage, is the voltage due to the positive charge at point X plus voltage due to the negative charge at point X. If we add more charges, we would add more. We have only two right now, so we'll do it with two. Now, we do have to be careful to make sure that we are using the correct R in this formula here. So what is meant by R is the distance. This distance is what's being labeled as R. So we should take a little bit of time figuring out the geometry here. That distance is the hypotenuse of this right triangle that I'm tracing out right now. So we know the, this leg of the right triangle. That leg of the right triangle is the separation divided by 2, d over 2. And the horizontal leg of the right triangle is the, well, x-coordinate x. So from Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse would be the square root of x squared plus d squared over 4. And if you figure out the geometry for the negative charge, you will see that, oh, it's the same distance. It, because of the symmetry, um, the distance here is the same as the distance for the positive charge. So that's the R that we'll use. So taking care to use that value for R, this is the total voltage. The voltage due to the positive charge, plus Q over 4 pi epsilon naught, and the value of the R that we got, x square, square root of x squared plus d squared over 4. It's a square rooted because for voltage, unlike for electric field, um, it's just a raised to the power of 1, no squares here. Uh, plus the voltage due to negative charge, minus Q over 4 pi epsilon naught square root of x squared plus d squared over 4. Hmm, wait, these are the same, um, same values, just the opposite sign. So they should add up to 0 volts for every point along this line. Does that make sense? If you remember us drawing those equipotential lines for dipole charge distribution in class, then this should make sense. This uh, equipotential line for this was the zero volt line. And um, in class, we explained it this way, that based on this definition of voltage and the fact that voltage at infinity is zero, we could say voltage very far away from the dipole is zero. And we could connect this point at infinity to all these points here um, along this line, this y equals zero line. And when you look at that carefully and you remember the electric field lines, which go something like this. This is the general picture of electric field line that you might remember. When you look at that, the path that we are tracing out is always going to be perpendicular to the electric field. So you accumulate no change in voltage as you go in from infinity. So this is the V equals zero line. And this calculation here is another way to show that yes, voltage at um, along the point Y equals zero should be zero. Now, let me ask you this question. What would be the electric field? along this line. It's easy to answer that electric field is zero because it's really easy to misapply this formula here. So if you remember from the textbook or the lecture, electric field along in the Y component should be equal to minus the partial derivative of voltage with respect to y. 
So you look at, oh, my voltage is equal to zero. So you take the y derivative, you get zero. Should an electric field be zero? You know that answer is wrong. Here's um, how we get to that wrong answer, misapplying this formula. Uh, you have to remember that first you have to write voltage in the full expression. Right now, we wrote voltage only in terms of x. We explicitly chose a particular point of y to write this voltage for, which means we actually cannot take this derivative even if we want you to, because our V is not written as a function of Y. So in order to do this correctly, what we first have to do is we have to write our voltage as a function of X and Y. And that's an exercise that takes a little bit more of an effort, but I think that's worth doing it. So in a couple of videos, I will do that. But first, for the next video, I want to um, calculate voltage along a different line that is a little bit easier and we don't get zero voltage. And then we will graduate into writing out an expression for voltage at all points around dipole distribution. Until then, bye.